Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watri from Hold to Run. Today I want to talk about business logics and composed logics. And if you're not familiar, <coughs> business logics is typically the actual code which defines in the activity class and in this help helper classes how the app runs, does all the data handling and functions, etc. And compose logics is these days coded, dynamically coded graphical language to produce user interface. So no more drawing. <clears throat> so what you're seeing is something that I been recently started to comply in my applications as a program structure simply to divide the business logics of the activity classes and these business code classes into their own section and the UI code which is actually three times the amount of my usual business logics amount they simply have to be in their own class which which can be then used as an abstract class and we can pass in lambda functions from the activity which are purely activity driven activity de data reliant functions triggered by the user in the uh, compose abstract class <clears throat> but at the same time it took me a little while to find and get settled with optimal ideal way to uh, interact back from the abstract class into the activity class via interfaces and override functions and these days okay i like interfaces they they make you uh <clears throat> they pretty much force you to implement the objects and uh this is the subject today and what we're gonna do i'll show the amount of code that typically in an actual project is required and then in the last video i just released this banner and mediation app in in a format where i just stuffed all the composables into the activity we're gonna modify and code this to comply this setup with interface override function callbacks from the abstract class of compose into activity class and pass in a few or one <clears throat> activity driven lambda functions into the compose class so probably if you have noted the similarities in your own program that you don't want to stuff all this amount of this is huge amount of code let me see this is my main compose abstract class which contains the uh, higher level composables which i use in the act main activity class so that's let's see <clears throat> sorry i have a flu nearly 3000 lines of code that would crowd my business logics activity class in here which is already having function based code and activity code more than 1000 lines so this this would be like 4000 lines of code so i think the uh, this needs structuring and the more the project grows it definitely needs some structuring on how to uh, where to put your ui code which is these days it's not xml drawn code anymore this is purely coded in the uh, compose which is awesome but the amount of code <clears throat> just keeps on piling up okay and for our banner and mediation demo which i'll be uploading into github for the latest release we'll also implement the interface to make those callbacks into one of our inner classes in the activity to get the callbacks so that's the subject i hope you like it and uh, let's start refactoring this little project here okay here we are in our little demo project which we now code into a better structure for ever growing composables and action uh, uh, functions 
So we need to make this a little bit of a over complicated to make this demo do its purpose. So first we want to migrate our two composables banner add view composables into an abstract class which can have huge amounts of composable code <clears throat> and uh, that's gonna be so-called higher level uh, uh, main compose based functions which try to use these uh, generic uh, Kotlin file composables as much as possible so these are reusable elements but okay now we don't have that abstract compose main compose class so let's create that first so in here we will make kotlin class and let's call it main compose <clears throat> like so and add it to kit and we have to make this an, into an abstract class here okay now we need to make two fragments, two composable fragments in here. This doesn't yet have interface, so interface will belong in here too. So let's create fragment one. Main fragment, let's call it main. Main fragment. And it'll have some functions in there. I mean parameters that we need to pass in but for now let's copy paste this first so-called main fragment here in main activity and let's take all of that okay <clears throat> okay we're gonna need to have the view model in here like so and it's gonna need data store uh, what was the uh, the data type of that data store let's go and see what am i passing pref data store preferences of course in here okay and of course we wanted to demo how the lambda functions go in, so <clears throat> let's pass on back press. This is always universal lambda function to be passed into composables. So when somebody presses backwards, that's what, what's gonna happen with the native backwards or anything else. We don't have a place to put this correctly, but actually, no, we don't yet have a place to put this one. But we could possibly put it there, but just to make it overly complicated to fill the purpose of the demo, we'll be using this so view as a callback function to call through the interface into the main activity. Okay, <clears throat> now let's continue and uh, bring the other function main fragment sorry second fragment function into our main compose here so this is gonna be called just fragment okay let's pass in our parameters like so and there's also universal on back pressed that the user could trigger by the native buttons of the ui for instance from the activity class actually okay now we don't have any methods to call back into the uh, uh, activity so now we can we have we can delete from here from these selectors <clears throat> the composables because they belong now into our main compose 
but we cannot communicate with this one so let's do that now we're gonna need an interface so let's add an sorry not java class kotlin class interface main let's call it main interface okay and just for the sakes of demo we're gonna have one function user navigate to request with intent not actual intent just value of int which we can detect when through our humoral which fragment we need to go back to or into in our main activity so now <clears throat> in our main compose we have to now extend the main interface like so now they are accessible for us and uh, this we're gonna now change into interface function of course this would be purely data driven possibly a data class which holds mutable data which ha has been modified by a text input or some other value input by the user and the data simply doesn't exist either in the view model or in the main activity unless user has specifically passed in that value in through the composable UI elements so they cannot that data simply does not exist anywhere un unless the user has inputted or modified so but for the sake of demo we change this so that we can call the interface function so as this is main fragment of course when we click the on button we want to end up into the second fragment so we would just now call in here navigate to and give the int value from our view model so main view is zero fragment view is one and it'll then update our so view back in the main activity okay let's go here and let's do the same now we can access if you're not familiar with interfaces and over functions as we extended this we can now pass this interface function so that's how it works okay we do the same in here except when we click the text button this fragment is gonna throw us back into this main view fragment and of course we say main view value of main view <clears throat> So we don't pretty much do anything with the on back pressed but let's do that also i want to ensure that it gets clicked hmm, we don't have a button we could add another button in here as this is a column text back button and now we can access the lambda function so lambda function is something that is already defined in the main activity and it's gonna get passed in at this level when the app starts it's not mutable anymore so it has to keep be what it is or is it mutable let me know if you know better that i but i'm just gonna pass it in here come back first okay and let's add another back button as a text button also in here so we can now go from fragment to fragment and we can always decide to go backwards through the native back press okay now we have it in here too so that's our composables now we have to implement this main compose ab abstract class in our main activity as an inner class which keeps on listening the UI requests so let's do that let's call it main compose and this is going to be called compose manager uh, 
do I have to make a late init var? Maybe I have to make late init Hmm, what's that late in it in here? Let me see, how are we initiating this one? So that's the inner class, but where it is held as a variable, where do we have? Sorry, it doesn't need, I'm totally lost, it doesn't need anything. So this is just gonna be in your class compose manager like so and this will now extend our main compose class which is pretty much what we just coded in here as an abstract class so it's probably asking us to do that and implement the members now Here's a point why I like <clears throat> interface, at least it makes you implement the members so you won't forget. So this is like a bulletproof to get things done and not to forget. So we coded one and now we implement that one and it should be happy. And there is only one interface function to be implemented. So what should this do? Now we know that user wanted to navigate into some place and we have a view model in the set content. So whenever we give this a new value, it'll refresh and show the fragment that user wants to. Okay, so let's do this in here is the intent. Maybe it should be fragment, not intent, but let's leave it like that. So, okay, now our inner class isn't instantiated yet. So let's put it in here, in the on create of compose is compose manager. So let's finish this. We are done with our compose manager. We can now delete our extra imports because there's no more composables pretty much in <clears throat> in here and now we want to access our graphical elements so that they get viewed anyhow in here so through our compose and this should be main fragment okay let's put those two parameters in here and I like to put the buttons also inside in here on back pressed the lambda function. So let's pass in view model, data store, and on back pressed dispatcher on back pressed. So that's the uh, <clears throat> native method for on back pressed and uh, we can listen and react on that one also in here so in here we have if the if it's not main view then we go back to the uh, main view from the uh, secondary fragment and if it's already main view then we can finish the app so that's how it's handled in here then we can pass in compose dot fragment and let's make it so sorry on back press on back press okay now just pass in the same view model and data store okay guys look we only had two composables in here <clears throat> and we reduced this that much already and uh, this much of a code that should have been right there in our main activity is now neatly 
piled up in our abstract class, which can make the callbacks through Navigate to interface. You can keep on adding these the any UI compose data driven functions, callback functions back to the main activity by just adding functions in here and calling them now from your abstract main compose class. And uh, it doesn't matter if this ha has 1000, 2000, 3000 lines of composables, but it's not crowding anymore in here. In here you should only have very surface styled composable to show the hierarchy and the design of your UI elements, how they should operate in here in the set content. And then just your application activity related business code. So while we're at it, we're, we're going to make another interface into our composable to simplify actually our banner add view in here because now we have an object for ads provider which holds these override functions and we can actually now remove these ones too from in here and get rid of application class and make an interface for this one too. So while we're at it let's do that too. Okay so now let's tidy up our ads provider class which pretty much can feed one or two or three ad suppliers from AdMob to Meta into our composable. We need another interface to uh, displace these in there. <clears throat> so, okay. So let's create another interface. Let's call it ads provider interface. Okay, and before we delete anything, this time we're gonna have a more callback functions, override functions. So we need to copy paste all of these <coughs> into our interface, like so. And as it's not any more optional to uh, leave these in here unused. I'm just going to comment out something that is definitely not going to get used in my code. And this here we will place directly in our composable and not in here. To keep these <clears throat> clean and tidy. Like so. Okay, and we can take all the extra off from here. Then let's go into our composables. It's already telling that, hey, you don't have these functions. Yeah, of course, I don't have those functions. Yet in there, we will need a scope. We have coroutine scope, which will do the job in here for our Uh, function which requires this. This is to save data into Prev's data store through suspend function. Okay. Now we need to modify our as provider to support the uh, interface. We can get rid of our coding scopes in here. We can delete these ones in here, and we will replace this with ads provider interface and make it abstract class like so. Okay, so that's good improvement already. We don't need application class anymore in here. And um, we don't need data store in here. It is all now situated in here where it should have been to begin with. But okay, now we do have our object. It is missing a couple of uh, uh, members that we're going to implement. Now we have to implement them even though in this we don't really need them because our on add loaded 
and fail to load and on add open already covers all the use case aspects for the banner ad but let's delete these ones we cannot have any more these super super functions but we need to add the missing members in here so pretty much i will leave them empty there is no use case whatsoever this could have been commented out but they exist for one fact that uh, in here because this is abstracting three different ad suppliers the google ad mob pretty much has all functions in their uh, ad view and meta only uses four of them and we can combine these in here and unity pretty much has four similar so according to my experience we only need these ones in here but if you use them then go ahead <clears throat> now we have a interface based ads provider also ready to be used and yeah i think it's better than before okay guys i think that's about it we are finished with this one i'll be uploading this into github and you can get familiar with this one how i implemented the uh, abstract main compose and how we are getting the callbacks in our main activity from the inner class through the interface and uh, how we are passing in these lambda functions in our main activity so if you remember we started with this ones as an explanation and that's exactly what we did in reality of course you're gonna have a couple of lambda functions other than on back pressed also which are purely activity data driven functions and you're gonna have a whole lot more of these override functions from the uh, jetpack compose ui driven data driven user functions back to the uh, activity class but it has proven to serve me very well okay we'll be back